Good morning, Fresh Start family and friends. I hope that you are doing well and you already got up, prepared yourself, prepared your family, brushed your teeth, got dressed, and are ready to experience this morning's powerful worship experience. Now, if you didn't know, we are just coming out of our prayer conference called Pray, and we are going to experience some recaps this morning from our conference. Now, if you already experienced Pray, Throw away what you already experienced because God is going to do something extra new for you this morning. So let's get ready to prepare for pray and for our worship experience by way of prayer. So Father, we thank you, we honor you, we bless your name, we lift you up, we exalt you above everything that we are and everything that we need this morning. We come with one agenda and one agenda only and that's to experience the King of Glory right where we are in our home. Homes, Father. We are open for what you desire to do this morning. We are ready for what you are going to pour out on us. And we just say that we are coming with the expectation for you to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. We know the God that we serve and we come ready to experience that God this morning, oh God. We pray that you'll begin to have your way this morning and we pray that you'll do what you want to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's get ready for worship.
man, I will worship him. You know why? Because he's already here. He lives in us. So why wait? Why wait? Why wait? His spirit is already here. His spirit already resides. His spirit already dwells. His spirit is already resting. Yeah, 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 yeah. His spirit is already here. Why would I wait to, to worship you when you are right here? When you are right now? When you are very present? When you are very manifested amongst us? Amongst us? Amongst us? I will not get me but that. Where are the 
travailing sons? Where are the travailing daughters? This is your sign of worship Where we lay down our every dead weight Where we lay down our agenda Where we lay down our preferences Where we lay down what we may have in mind Where we lay down our own ideology And we submit and we surrender We submit and we surrender And humble ourselves
Wow, worship was amazing. And all I know is I remember to worship God forever, like forever, ever. And now we get to worship God in a different way and that's by way of giving. Go ahead and watch this video next because we're gonna worship God every way that we can, even with our finances. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we lift you up. Jesus, we glorify you. We didn't get tired of singing your praise. We didn't get tired of lifting your name. There's only one name and there's none higher. Jesus, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, can we give God glory for the gift and for the word that exists on the inside of Prophet Stephen Chestnut? He's a gift to the body of the Christ. Of Christ. <laughs> the Christ. He's the only one. Is that all right? Um, I have an assignment right now to do offering, but I want to say, um, just as one of the pastors in the house, that this was not the thing. This was a kickstart into the thing. So we're not waiting for another conference to move and activate and flow in something. This was a kickstart into the thing. Amen. It was only, they was only saying oh, amen over there. I really need us to get that. Sometimes we can come into a place like this and get activated and have the thing, but not actually carry it out. And so I charge you to move out into it as you go home, back to your prayer closet, to your car, wherever it is that you, that you lift up um, your intercession, that it would be a lifestyle, that it wouldn't just be this moment right here. We honor God for the moment, but it's more than that. Um, so the heart of the Father is that we would live in obedience, and out of that, he would get glory from it. I really sense um, to remind the house, that some of y'all are not from here, but that's okay. Because you're here today, you get to reap the benefits of what happens in this house. We received a word. There was a word over this house about finance, about the freedom in finances, but also a word about generosity that the Lord was taking us to a new place in generosity. And how many know you can't be generous if you don't have anything? Wait, okay. You can't be generous if you don't have anything. And the Lord has a blueprint for how to get the things. Is that all right? So I'm going to read this scripture. It's going to be a little long, but we haven't been here that no, we've been, we've been here a while. It's fine. Second Corinthians 9, 6. I'm going to read it quickly, and it's in the NLT. It says, remember this, a farmer plants only a few seeds, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. What's his intention? That we would have everything we need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. That's a promise. When we share and give freely, God remembers our good deeds. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and, the, and them bread to eat. Everything comes from God. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources. And then, wait, let me say that again. In the same way that y'all able to be able to go to the grocery store and there's food in there. Yeah, is the same way that he will provide and increase our resources and then produce a great harvest of what? Generosity in you. Sometimes the harvest is the generosity on the inside of us. The man of God already preached. You watch it. Yes, you will be enriched in every way. You will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. So I could go get Prada shoes. No, well, can we be generous to ourselves? Sorry, y'all, I love a shoe. Not for us, so that we may always be generous. That's the point. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. David, I want you to hear this. 
So two things will result from the, the, this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met. The needs of the believers in Fresh Start will be met. The needs of the believers in New York City will be met. The needs of the believers in New York will be met. The needs of the believers in the tri-state area will be met. The needs of the believers in the United States of America will be met. The needs of the believers in North America will be met. And they will joyfully express their thanks to God. I want to say this to worship leaders, for minstrels, those preachers. You want to see people praise? Become generous. We're not, we not pumping and prodding anymore. Be generous. The Bible says money answereth all things. And some of the reason that we've been going through this intrinsic warfare is because we don't have no money. We broke and we live it from check to check. And God is coming to deal with it. Sit down. Watch it because I'm not doing this today. As a result of your ministry, listen, I love y'all. All right. As a result of your ministry and generosity, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove. We always talking about tongues, right? We're talking about fruit. Guess what one of those fruit is? Generosity. They will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. Let me say this, we all have a mission in this room, and that is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And your generosity is proof that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. I'm just reading the scriptures, and they will pray for you. Is it, where, where are we at? Is it pray? And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given you. And we are to thank God for this gift that's too wonderful for words. I want to say this. Many of us have, we, we've been rekindled in prayer. We've been reignited in prayer. And we want to continue to pray. But I believe that there is an assignment on our lives to be so generous in other people's lives that they begin to pray. So we're not, we are now acting not just as recipients of this good news, but we now disciple others in prayer. And we raise up other people who pray. That is our mandate, that we would live out the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and that what we have, the seed that's on the inside of us, as we give it, it will be repl replicated. Seed only bears fruit of its own kind. So what you sow, you will reap. I want to encourage you tonight to be generous. I don't think we've ever done a money lot, not since I was here, and never even before. Because we're not to give under compulsion. But it would be remiss of us as leaders in this house not to remind you of the truth, of the way things work, what God has set up. I would be ruining your life if I told you, oh yeah, you could just step off that cliff and didn't tell you about gravity. This is a law. And so I charge you tonight to be generous for the glory of God. I charge you tonight to be generous for the glory of God. Y'all can bring those buckets up here and you guys can begin to give. Oh, there's the things up here. Text to give, the cash app, Zelle, if you have cash in your pocket, whatever it is. I wanna challenge you to come out of a religious mindset and a hurt mindset, even from church hurt and other stuff that wasn't real and wasn't true and step into the truth of the Lord. He's called us to be a generous people. And those who are generous will always receive and have everything they need and plenty more to share. He's entrusting us with more because we are trustworthy. And so I charge you tonight to be trustworthy. I thank God for what he's done tonight. I think we've received generously tonight in the spirit we can give it out. Y'all, I got so worked up. I didn't pray before y'all gave, but I'm going to pray now. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, <laughs> that everything is yours. Everything. Y'all can walk while we pray. That's okay. Everything is yours. Everything belongs to you. 
We honor you, God, with the fruit, God, that you've given us. We give it back to you. We give it and sow it into this church. We give it to one another that your church might be strengthened and you might be glorified and lifted up. God, that's our desire today. I pray, God, for every person who has to give, God, that they would give generously. I thank you, God, that it's not about a number and it's not about a certain amount or looking like this or that. I pray, God, that you honor. I thank you, God, that you honor even the widow's last bit. You're so good like that. So I thank you, Lord, for building in us generosity and building your kingdom. We love you. We thank you and we praise you. And everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, if you haven't given yet. Now that we've had the opportunity to partner with God with our finances, now we're about to go into another part of our worship experience, and we're going to hear from Prophetess Keisha Cephas, where she'll be able to teach us the foundations of prayer this morning. Let's get ready for that. Glory to God. Listen, don't take your seat yet. Let's crack this bad baby up, okay? <laughs> because this is a prayer conference and I do want to open up in prayer. But first, let me say thank you so much, Pastor Coleman and your beautiful wife and your children, the Fresh Start Ministry, the church itself, every leader, all staff members, every volunteer, to every person that came from Bahamas and beyond. Thank you so much. I know some of the crushing babies are in here that I have discipled and mentored in the place of prayer. But I do want to open up because tonight is about Collide, correct? And that I'm going to talk about on the uh, praying the will of God. But let me go ahead and start praying. And I need you guys to help me pray it through. And so begin to speak in your heavenly language as we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to bless your holy name in this place. We come to give you glory, honor, and praise. We come to lift up your holy name for your good and your mercy endure forever. For we enter into your gates with thanksgiving uh, into your courts with praise uh, for this is the day that you have made uh, we're choosing to rejoice and be glad in it uh, father we call you the sovereign god uh, we call you adonai uh, for you are master and ruler in our life uh, for it is you that we live move and have our entire being uh, in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth uh, for you said the heavens are open uh, and you said breakthrough is in the midst of us uh, we declare god uh, that there's a fire burning at the altar to consume the enemies within our soul in the mighty name of Jesus for tonight you come to break restrictions and limitations of the prayer lives of your people in the mighty name of Jesus for we all know what it means to weep between the porch and the altar in the mighty name of Jesus for there's a fire burning within our bellies tonight in the mighty name of Jesus you come to set us ablaze you come to ignite us in the mighty name of Jesus for there will not be prayer or intercession of usual in the mighty name of Jesus for in the midnight we will cry we will stand in the gap and make up hedges and we will build walls in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and father we will not let you go until you bless us for this is a season God that you're even changing our name in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus, for we're gaining momentum in this hour, God, and you're releasing another measure of your power and authority in the mighty name of Jesus, for you're breaking us out of chains and bondage in the mighty name of Jesus, for the spirit of Python, God, is being utterly destroyed, for it came in a season, God, to wrap itself 
up around our prayer life uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, to try to kill our momentum uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, but tonight, God, uh, we break free in the spirit uh, and we soar like an eagle uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, I declare now uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, that there's a fresh anointing in this place. Uh, lift every burden, God. Uh, destroy every yoke, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, we declare, God, uh, that every gift, God, uh, is being activated now. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, for there's an outpouring, Lord, uh, of your spirit, God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, for you come after the flesh. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, crucify this flesh. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, for no good thing dwells uh, in the flesh, God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, let you increase uh, that we may decrease uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Holy Spirit uh, we love you in this place uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, you are our helper you are our comforter we call you our defender you are our intercessor you are the one that teaches us uh, the one that leads us uh, the one that guides us uh, the one that directs us uh, you are God uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, you help us pray uh, from revelation, God, uh, into revelation, God, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, the fire prayer, God, uh, and intercession, Lord, uh, is in this place, God, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, the all of joy, uh, the all of gladness, uh, power and strength, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, breathe in and out, uh, in us God in the mighty name of Jesus we are not satisfied with the old no more we want the new something fresh in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah a fresh feeling of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus that keeps us from lying that keeps us from cussing that keeps us from fornicating that keeps us God hallelujah we need the Holy Ghost Jesus hallelujah God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus it's you God that we live move and have our entire being hallelujah 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 no more weeping no more mourning no more crying over the old fresh new has come to you a fresh wind fresh glory new direction has come unto you hallelujah 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 I prophesy a shift in your mind, a shift in your will, a shift in your emotion, a shift in your gift, a shift in your assignment. You will not quit in this hour. Hallelujah. 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 Drink deep. Drink deep from the wells of Jesus Christ. He will fill you up until you want no more. We bless Jesus. We bless Jesus. Give him his glory. Give him his honor. Give him his praise. We love you, God. We need you, God. We bless you, God. We worship you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can take your seats now. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am in New York for the second time, Jesus. <laughs> the last time I was here was the breakout of COVID. What a bad experience for me. <laughs> but this time it's a good experience. So I thank each and every one of you. 
I am going to teach for about 45 minutes. Is that okay? And then we're going to do activations. They're like, what? Yes. <laughs> it's a prayer conference. All right? So we're going to get activated today. I teach, train, and activate the saints and the power of prayer and fasting. And I also deal with the soul of the intercessor. All right? Can't be bound and standing in gaps. <laughs> Can't bind and loose what you've been sleeping with last night. Uh, all right? So I love dealing with the soul of the intercessor. Why? Because God deals with me that way. He crushes me and reduces me down to the lowest form of myself that he may get the glory out of my life. So every season there's a crushing for me. All right, here's your first. I love giving definitions. Uh huh. What you can't define, you have no authority over. But the moment that you can define it and get revelation in it, then you have authority over it. All right? Can't use other people's language or their revelation because you'll find yourself trying to bind something that you have no revelation in and you'll choke. All right? All right. Here we go. What is prayer? I always start there because I can't assume that everybody knows. All right? So prayer is two-way dialogue. Go ahead. Get your notebooks out. <laughs> I have a lot of notes. By the time we finish, you should have seven pages. All right? <laughs> All right. What is prayer? Prayer is two-way dialogue. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> prayer is two-way dialogue between God and his people. And then I want you to write his covenant people. These are people who are in partnership with him or co-laborers with him. These are his sons and his daughters. You are not an orphan. You don't have to come pleading and begging. This is your father waiting for you to come in and commune with him. But it's not about you just bringing in your prayer list or your prayer directives. Write it down. God has something he wants to say, too. He asks questions. Why? Because he has an opinion about everything that we see, that we say, that we go through. Sometimes we talk too much in prayer. Instead of waiting to hear from the Father, silencing the traffic that is in our head, we come with, Father, can you do this? Father, can you do that? And he's saying, I already know what you are in need of before you can even ask of me. But can you send, take time to be intimate with me, to commune with me? You have learned the mechanics of ministry, but have you yet learned how to become me, like me? The righteousness of who I am, the right way of being, the right way of saying, the right way of doing. Are you a skilled listener? Do you know what it means to wait in my presence and hear a word from me? And some people say, well, I don't know how long I'm supposed to wait in there. It's not that you're waiting still. You're waiting with anticipation that your father will speak. So prayer is two-way communication. Dialogue is essential. The father has something to say. Yes, you can go in there. And everything that you are not, you can become in his presence. In his presence is the fullness of joy. In his presence is instruction and direction. In his presence is guidance. I love to be in a place of prayer where God is. Because I don't have to role play for anybody when I'm in that place. The saints will have you role playing if you're not careful. The mask was not just the mask that came in COVID. We've been wearing masks way before COVID came and required us to wear a mask. But in prayer, you strip down everything of who you are and you say, God, here I am, naked and unashamed, casting all of my cares upon you, knowing that it is you that care it for me. And I wait, knowing that my father has an answer for me. And if I be in sin, say it, if I be in sin, I can even give that to you, God. Why? How do I know? Adam was in sin. Correct? In the Garden of Eden. 
And what did God say? Adam, where are you? It's not because he didn't know where he was. He was making him accountable for his action and where he was. To what? Bring him back into a place of dialogue. Why? Because sin makes us hide. Sin makes us run. Sin makes us draw back from God. We were born to commune with him whether we in sin or not. Why? Because my father will forgive me the moment that I open up my mouth and give it to him. All right? Go to Matthew chapter 6. Are you getting anything so far? No, I just started. (laughs) Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. And it says, but when you pray... Go into your most private room and close in the door. Pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you in open. The message Bible says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet place, a secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there simply and honestly as you can imagine. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to see his grace fill the room. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor that shows up in a place, but it also gives us the inner ability to complete our assignment in the earth. It's that type of grace that causes us to be sufficient in the areas where we're insufficient. What is a reward? Write it down. Rewards are answer prayers. This is why I tell people, I don't have time to be playing around in prayer. I'm looking for my reward. I got proof that God answers me. I have awards, rewards, and trophies on my mantle that lets me know that God answers. I got saved in October 2000. My husband asked for a divorce the moment that I got saved, and he got saved with me. We get filled with the the Holy Spirit, and then this man, this man, (laughs) asked for a divorce. And then I start praying, first telling God on him, and then God shift on me to talk about me and start telling me about my rebellion. And how I was being Jezebelic. And how I was full of pride. And how I didn't know how to submit. And I'm like, but look what he's doing to me. And God is like, but look what you are doing to me. So he was showing me that as much grace as he's extended to me and mercy, I should be able to extend it to my own husband. And that I needed to get in on my face and get out of his face. And win him by way of my conduct. And it took, say, three weeks. Three weeks for me to shift. And then he starts saying, I want the God that you serve. That is an award for me and a reward. So you can't tell me 25 years later that God does not answer. So when I approach God in a place of prayer, I pray according to his will, which is his word. How do I know I'm in the will? It's because I know his word. And I know him for myself. I don't pray according to Keisha L. Cephas' will, but I pray according to what the word says. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word, God, will forever stand in my life. Your word hovers over me. Your word sustains me. You yourself are my refuge and my fortress. And when I can't see God, you'll open up my eyes and let me see beyond the moment. For you are the God of my past, my present, and my future. You would never allow me to have scales on my eyes and let my foot get caught in a snare or a trap. You are God. So I fight for the reward. Having this dialogue with this mighty father, the good shepherd shows up. Psalm 23, 1 through 6. He shows up and he loves me. He cultivates me. He nurtures me. He leads me. He guides me, but he also corrects me. Then he protects me. Anoint my head with fresh oil. Spread a table before my enemies and still draw me into a good place. That God. 
praying to the will, according to the will. He loves when we come and ask questions. But sometimes we're so busy waiting for his creation to answer us versus the creator to answer us. I sense this. I know this. I see this. What do you think? What do you know? Why? Because we are in a microwave society. We want everything quick. Here we go. Collide. Write the word down. It is to come together with solid or direct impact. When we come into a place of prayer, we want to use our bow and our arrow. Because I'm not coming to play with the enemy. When I shoot the bow, shoot the arrow with my bow, I'm looking for breakthrough. I'm looking for the God of breakthrough. Collide. Make my enemies feel the impact. I soar like an eagle. You soar like an eagle. We didn't come to be like, oh, the enemy is attacking me. What am I going to do? And because I was from the streets, if I wasn't scared on the streets, I'm not going to be scared in the church. I wasn't a punk then. I'm going to be a punk now. Except for I had to learn how to fight differently. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against rule, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, and spiritual wickedness, and what? High places. For God himself has given us power, what? To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by enemies will be able to hurt us. So we collide. And my God is greater than any demonic force that's trying to impact me. Why? Because it's God's will that I be protected. It's God's will that you be protected. Praying five minutes is not getting it anymore. Praying on the way to work is not getting it anymore. Praying just to get by to say that I did a thing is not getting it anymore. Can't you tell? Look at the world. We can't even tell who's saved or who's not saved anymore. We look like the world in the church. Coming down the timelines of social media. Cuss words, not curse words, cussing saints. Fighting one another, saints. We don't even know what's going on. Now we get into gossip. Did you see that? Did you hear that, girl? Did you? Did you? No, I didn't. You know why? Because I'm looking for a reward. There's no reward in this. This is nothing but dong to me. And I'll use it as fertilizer. But I refuse to allow it to penetrate my heart. So if you want to know about it, you know about it. Because why? I'm on an assignment. I'm an intercessor. I'm a watchman. I don't have time to have mess coming down my timeline. Why? Because those are voices that's trying to get in my ear to penetrate my heart to get me to speak something that's contrary to what God is saying. So no, I didn't hear about it. Didn't, didn't, don't, know. I don't know. Real talk. Clean up your timeline collide with that because you know what it's drawing us to gossip because gossip doesn't mean that it's a lie it means that you're still talking about a truth that you're not supposed to be talking about it's none of your business and then when we ask what is God saying I don't know what God is saying But you know what Periscope was saying? 
Instagram is saying. You know all about Facebook, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, the clubhouse, or what is it, the house club? I don't even know. Where are you? You're not doing Facebook Lives anymore. Let me tell you why. <laughs> because God said, are you trying to make me famous or make you famous? Are you trying to build a reputation for you or a reputation of me? So I don't mind being in obscurity. Actually, my obscurity just came to an end, okay? <laughs> but it's okay. Why? Because I prayed myself through. My circle knows how to pray. Listen, I don't have anybody in my circle that can't pray. You're not going to keep sucking me dry, and then when I need prayer, you don't have nothing in you. Get out of my circle. You're not my support system. Collide with that. You want to know the will? Start talking to God about your friends. You might be giddy and trying to take everybody with you. Reduce the number. All right, back to me being civilized. Praying the will of God. Write it down. <laughs> I gave you collide is defined as to come together <laughs> with solid or direct impact. All right? Some of the synonyms for it is clash, conflict, discord, or jar. Antonyms for collide is accord, blend, conform, fit or harmonize. I have never seen so much division in the church. But we selling intercession all over the world. Selling. Selling. Selling it. It is. It is. Calling themselves masters. And then when they stand before the people they can't pray two minutes. How could it be so much prayer, but yet so much discord among the brethren? So much competition and comparison. We can't even esteem one another like we're supposed to, like I esteem this beauty over here. I've been watching. You know, we've been seeing each other a long time. <laughs> Not just when you, mm, yeah. <laughs> but we're supposed to esteem one another, right? Honor one another. Value one another. Pray for one another. Not gossip. Not tear one another down. How can we be God's intercessor standing in the gap and yet we tear one another to shreds? To shreds. And be he he and ha ha and in one another face the next day. The day is coming. Folk gonna call you to the carpet. To the carpet. Did you say? And you better own it. Praying the will of God. Here's my first reflection point. It is a point that you can go and look back on, all right? Praying God's will is being honest with him about what you really want in prayer. We cannot manipulate God, not with our tears, not with our begging. We have to be honest. God help me. In the days of obscurity, I told God, I can't even get much out to you right now. I'm so hurt. I'm wounded. I feel the pain of this season. I feel like you unfair, actually. Why the standard got to be up here for me and it looks like it's down here for them? And then God said, what? 
Are you comparing yourself? Your journey with me with somebody else's journey? Are you comparing your assignment with somebody else's assignment? Are you crying because you got hurt in your process? Because you put your trust in a place that I never told you to put your trust. I said put your trust in me. Not in your position. Not in your title. Not in your church. Not in your husband. Not your children. Or your money. Your career. Or your education. I said put it in me. So now you hurt. Wounded. Crying. Full of pain. Tell me I don't even know how I got here. You do. It's called idolatry. You in a soul tie with, a, with an opponent, a pretender, opponent, a contender, your adversary. <laughs> it hurt. Me, Lord, is what we say. <laughs> but not my will, God. <laughs> Let your will be done. And he's like, no, you're trying to project your will on me. Your mouth is saying one thing. Your heart is communicating something else. And then we run down our resume. But I fast for 21 days. I give my tithe and my offering. I built this, I did that, and God said, but I didn't ask you for your resume. I ask you for your obedience. That's the will. Your submission, that's the will. Your yes, that is the will. Being honest. Asking him to help in that place of the soul. You know the one that tells you that you can get away with it because nobody else sees you. Uh-huh. That one that draws you back. I know you quiet me too. Because I'm not telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something that I know. I was a smoker. Weed smoker, whatever y'all want to call it. Loud, marijuana, reefer, whatever. I didn't just smoke one. I smoked trees. I smoked land. I smoked grass. I smoked it all. But when I got hit, you don't think that devil said, this will medicate you for the moment? Wow. Who would know? And then you got to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps because it looks like nobody else is there to help pull you up. And you say, if God delivered me then, why would I go back into bondage? All right, here we go. Point number one. <laughs> right, girl, right. This is my first point. Ain't this something? <laughs> I cracked my own self up. All right. The reason why I laugh, let me tell you, because I'm very serious, right? So I have to laugh so you won't think I'm being mean. And I'm really not mean. It's just my facial expressions. <laughs> but the saint's so fickle, <laughs> I couldn't receive from her because she had on pants and uh. So now I laugh. So you'll know, I'm cool. Point number one, we can't pray the will of God without knowing him. Write it down. Somebody said that's a good point. I'm... All right, go to 1 John, and let's look at chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, and I'm coming out of the Amplified Classic. I write this to you who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the name of the Son of God in a peculiar service, blessings conferred by him on men, so that, so that you may know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have life. <laughs> yes, eternal life, 14, and this is the confidence the assurance, the privilege of boldness 
which we have in him, we are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement, write it down, with his own plan, not our own plan, his own plan, he listens to and hears us. And if, and if, since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have been granted us our present possessions, the request made of him. Write this down. Kill your plan A, B, C, and D. It is only his will, which is his plan. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. The thoughts and plans that I have toward you are good and not of evil to give you an expected end, to give you a future, to give you a hope and cause you to prosper. This is not about if this doesn't work, God, then I got plan B. Either you're going to let him be God or you're going to be your own God. I know. Told me the same thing, too. <laughs> Message Bible. My purpose in writing is simply this, that you who believe in God's son will know beyond a shadow of doubt that you have eternal life. The reality, not the illusion and how bold and free we can be in his presence, freely asking according to his will, surely that he is listening. And if we are confident that he's listening, we know that what we ask for is good as our words. So why do we doubt? You already know that you're in him. You believe that God is your father. So why do we go in prayer saying, if you will, if you can? Think about it. Either he can or he can't. Period, point blank. I know the will. Why, God? Because it's in your word. I know what you said about me. The reason why we struggle so much in prayer is because we don't know what he said. Read, write it down in all caps, read your Bible. Not the captions, not the post. Read your own Bible. Read your Bible. It's not hard. Read it in King James, message, voice. It doesn't matter. Read it. Because if I can post three times a day, surely I can read my Bible three times a day. Surely, surely, surely. If I can wake up and that thumb does touch that phone, if you're not careful, what you do first in the morning identifies who your God is. You don't think that phone don't call? I put that joke on do not disturb. You know why? Because otherwise I'll be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And you'll look up at 6 a.m. Next thing you know, it's 9 a.m. I have spent three hours on social media and spent no time with God. I done watched everybody's live or everybody's lie. Because everything we hear on social media is not God. I don't care how they say, God gave me this, God did this, God said this. If it cannot be reconciled with the word, it's not God. It's not. It's not. God's will definition. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. God's will definition. The will of God or divine will is the idea that God has a plan for all of us. According to Jeremiah 29 verses 11 through 13. This is the greatest discovery we can ever make. Is that God has a plan for me. We're so busy asking everybody else. Especially in our prophetic lines. What is God's plan for me? How can we ask the creation. And not the creator. What your plan is for me. He is the master planner. He has the blueprint. Yes, a prophet can speak into it. Don't I know that. But I dare not seek you out and haven't seeked him out. 
and pursued him and chased him for an answer of what's my next. Have you ever felt stagnant? Tell the truth, raise your hand. Stagnant. You know why? Because we get stuck right here in the middle with no movement, no current, no flow. You know why? Because we didn't pursue him to get a glimpse of our future, so we have nothing to chase him for. So at the same time, there's a collide. There's a clash. It's your past trying to call you back, and your future is at a standstill because in the middle, you undecided. Then we become what? Feeling like God rejected us. Have you ever? Felt like God left you? And he like, I never changed my position, but you did. So what do, then what? We feel like he abandoned us. Now we become prisoners of our own mind. Talking about we in our wilderness season. It's a lie. It is. You're not in a wilderness season. Because if you're in a wilderness season, you one, you'll never be alone. They never went by themselves. Number one. Number two, it is the ground to prove you, to test you, and try you. So if it's not proven ground, you're not in the wilderness. And it's not a punishment in the wilderness. I don't care what the preacher said in 2000. It's where you discover who God really is, how he provides for you, how he has made a promise to you. It's where prophetic utterance is, is released. It's where you see provision. You can't tell me you're in the wilderness and don't have no direction. Oh, okay, back to God's will definition. It's called discovery. Write this down. God is the God of your past, your present and your future. There is nothing that he doesn't know or do not know about us. Why? Because he's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. All right? Are you getting anything? Because y'all look like I pinched you or something. <laughs> All right, I want to talk about the sovereign will. The sovereign will. God's sovereign will. Write down Psalm 24, verses 1 and 2. Uh -huh, Psalm 24, verses 1 and verse 2. The sovereign will. This is based upon the fact that God is creator of heaven and earth and has full authority over everything that we desire if you let him. God is the source of all creation that all things come from and should depend on him. Now write your question down. This is it. Do you really depend on him? Let me tell you about me. See, I was a fixer. When I was working for Comcast, you'll be telling me about your technical difficulties that you're having with your cable. And I can hear one cue, and I'll be fixing it. While you talking. Because I want you to get off my line. And I used to get in trouble for it. When it came to my coaching sessions. They say you can fix it. But you have no empathy. You hear it. You fix it. And then you push them along. But it was the same way I did my own life. Because I was so used to fixing things in my life that when trouble came, I felt like I should fix it and not you, God. So I was making things worse for myself. So God asked me, are you God or am I going to be God? And then sometimes I had to think about it. You're taking too long to fix it. And then God will tell me things like, you know why you went through hardship? That you may learn empathy. So when somebody else approaches you and you see what's going on, you will have a connection with them versus looking at them like I can look. When you cry, Ugh, I feel nothing. Because I can be emotionally disconnected. So God had to teach me how to connect to emotions 
Because of why? They are his people. How are you going to intercede and pray for them or get my heart to prophesy to them and you have no emotions? You feel nothing. Only thing you want to do is fix it. You tell me I'm going through and I'll be like, you shouldn't be going through. Because if you, you know, just no compassion, no mercy, no grace. Now I can listen to you. Oh. Oh my God. How long? I got a plan for you. It's going to take about six months, but are you ready? Yay. Because I had to learn how to connect and take my time and stop fixing people. Write it down. Stop fixing you. Let the sovereign God do the work. Because if I just did this, then I'll be able to get here. But if I just did, took this route, then I'll be able to get over here. Take the straight and narrow way. Don't, oh God, okay, here we go. I think I shall. <laughs> I know y'all think this is a comedy show, but it's not, I promise. You don't have to make yourself come up. You don't have to be on everybody's platform. Stop thinking that you're being overlooked because nobody's asking you. Could it be that God is protecting you? You're not going to catch Keisha L. Cephas rubbing elbows with nobody. You are not my God because if you can put me up, you'll bring me back down. I had to learn the hard way. I know. When somebody says, I created this path for you. I made you. And then you look and maybe you did make me. I'm not for sure. And then when that door closed in your face, you feel like you got nothing left. Sovereign will. God's will. His way. Got it? Learn some morals. Ethics. <laughs> Learn it. Why? Because a lot of us is just doing all manners of things. And then we get in prayer, we have nothing. Write this down. Do you ever feel bankrupt in the spirit? <sighs> what have you put in? If it's junk, you're going to reap junk. I know, that's what he told me to. Is it Netflix? Because I need to binge. Somebody said, no, don't take that. No, no, no. <laughs> Not Netflix, don't do that. <laughs> My Saturdays is dedicated. <laughs> it's the weekend. You know I'm single, girl. <laughs> what I'm saying is, let him fulfill you. Not the chicken, not the cookies, not the, any emotional eaters? <laughs> Boom. I'll be like, ooh, y'all getting on my nerves. Let me, where are my cookies at? And then God said, you are, you, this is emotional eating. You trying to allow this to fulfill you and I'm trying to fulfill you. You want to binge on, what was that, prison break. You know, I was like, ooh, prison break. I was like, I got to catch up because the sixth one coming out. And God said, catch up with me. Do you know what's going on in your world? Do you know what mountain you getting ready to take? Do you know your assignment outweighs Netflix? Did you know that your assignment outweighs those cookies that have been waiting on your desk for God knows how long? Keisha, how do I smoke it out? Through prayer and fasting. Because people talk about prayer a lot, but they sure skip fasting. Skip your butt back to fasting. It's prayer and fasting. The, the dynamic duo. 
is prayer and fasting. Skip some plates. Not, I'm fasting from social media. You a lie. It's not in the Bible. That's called a denial. That's what that's called. Push back the plate. I don't really know how to fast because you know I'm a diabetic. And you know I got to take my medication. And I got to do this and I got to Well, I worked in a medical clinic. And you got to fast before we take your blood work to make sure that we are able to diagnose you correctly to see whether or not if you still need the meds or not. They tell you 8 to 12 hours. If you can do it for the clinic, you can do it for God. That's a will. If I fast, I might die. Your flesh will die. But your assignment will come alive. That's the will. Everybody pray. We pray. Yeah, but let me see you push back that chicken. Let me see you do that. Surely I'll be big as a house if I didn't fast. I know I will because I like to eat. For this reason, I feel a little tight today. I was in Belize eating everything that was moving. Cows, horses, it didn't matter to me. I was like, yes, yes, yes. But you better know I got a discipline. And I don't need nobody to take me on a fast. I know I need to fast. One day, three days, seven days, 21 days. I haven't reached the 40, but I did 30. It's the dynamic duo. We wonder why we're not hearing anything. We're not fasting. America is out of order. And I'm going to invade. That thing will invade you. Why you think so many people trying to go into mountains and you see them, arts and entertainment and media, and then they look like they are part of it versus them making an impact? They went right in without direction. It comes with fasting. Fasting, write it down, humbles you to the wheel. You want to want to pray in the wheel? Fast. It will break you. Make you cry. You be talking about, oh, God, I just don't know. You know what I sinned against you? I know I did. You start talking about stuff that you didn't know that was still in your soul. You went in there for one thing and God started digging and picking. You're like, I didn't come in here for this. I'm coming here to tell you how I want this and that and this. And he's like, if I take you there too soon, your, your gift will get you there, but your character will not keep you. So I got to get into your soul. So you can stay, write it down, in line with the wheel. I know, it's hurtful. Because we feel like God is picking on us. I'm an intercessor. An intercessor. But when you hired by God, you got to play by his rules. His rules. It is. You see, he'll start saying stuff to you. Pray for your enemy. I don't want to. Poor manifestation. I don't want to pray for my enemy, but it's part of the will. But look what they did to me. Well, look what you've done to me. And I'm the one that say, I'm not praying. Can I say it? I'm not praying for none of these bastards, is what I told him one time. These illegitimate children of yours. Bald-headed children. And you want to take me to a place on my knees and face after they don't kick me in my stomach, stepped on my toes, and poked me in my eye. And you want me to pray for them. But it's part of the will. Because I'm teaching you how to humble yourself. Can you still see good when wicked is being presented? 
It'll make you cry. Mm -hmm. It is a fact. What if it's the family? Them the ones right there. They are the ones. And God told me, how dare you? Show more compassion standing at the altar praying for a stranger. And you can't pray for your sister? Your auntie? Your grandmother? Because they, they said something that rubbed you the wrong way? The audacity. You show mercy more for the people in the church than the ones that you believe in me to save. What a poor testimony you are, a poor example you are, a poor model you are, a poor template you are to try to draw something that you hate because y'all in conflict. I know it's enough to make you repent. No edges. My job is to make you completely bald, sir. Why? Why? Because God wants us to be effective and fervent. If you feel like your prayer life is dry, check your heart. It hurts. Especially if you keep getting hit in your armor. It's tattered. It's leaning to the side. Some of us don't relax our belt. And if you relax the belt of truth, then every part of your armor falls off. Go study. Because truth is no longer there. And God is like, but if you would have held up the shield of faith, which covers the whole entire body, but especially your heart, you would not be wounded. You relaxed your shield. You relaxed it. And got out the wheel. Have you ever? Raise your hand. Been outside the wheel? Just out. You know you're outside the wheel. God, I'm not doing nothing. How about that? I'm not praying, I'm not prophesying, I'm not preaching, I'm not doing nothing. I might show up for a service, might. And God said, who are you hurting? I was like, I thought I was hurting everything else around. Yeah, but apparently you got, you want to say something? You got something to say? Who are you hurting? So now he has to come for the quit. I know. It's called the quit. I quit on you, God. Because you're saying you're quitting on people, but really you're quitting on God. Yeah. We're supposed to be drawing to him. But when we get mad, we draw back from him. We out the wheel. I know. Thank you, sugar, for your agreement. She like, yes, I know me. <laughs> I almost slapped a couple of people in the church the other day, Keisha, I'm telling you, girl. <laughs> I promise you I did, girl. All right, write down Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. See, it's a lot of people saved, but they're not converted or transformed. And we're wondering why we're having so much conflict in the church. Because paradigms haven't shifted yet. And you have to know, yeah, you saved, but you haven't been renewed in your mind and I know it to be true because when I was saved and when somebody, because I did have food written on, on, on my forehead when I first got saved because I didn't think conflict and gossip and all that stuff was in the church. Woo, what a rude awakening I had. And so then when I got tested by it, the street girl showed up. and I was like, girl, lady, ma'am. All of the scriptures left me. All of them. Only third, the only thing I said, seen was red. Fight, fight, fight. And my friend was like, no, it's the devil. And I was like, well, let's do it. <laughs> Until you hear something like, you failed your test. You didn't pass your test. You have to retake this test. You're not graduating to the next level because you failed 
That'll humble you. And then you're thinking, well, when is the next one so I can prepare? And then he's like, you've been in training the whole time. When you thought I was silent, I was giving out a test. And you passed. You didn't pass. You didn't pass. Because you was really still in your flesh. And then you're like, I wonder why I'm not going to the next dimension. You failed. You back in kindergarten again. You're supposed to be a senior. You keep failing the same test. And guess who we keep blaming? People. You went from this church to this church to this church to this job to that job from this man to that girl, and yet you still fail. Is it people or is it you? It was me. I had to be honest with me. I was still carnal. So one day I write it down. I sobered up. Another word we need in the church, sobriety. I ain't never seen so many drunkards in the church in my life. A little Hennessy here, a little gin there. Take a little wine for your stomach for here. You don't have no stomach problems. You're trying to stop my fun. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to stop you from becoming an alcoholic in the midst of the pandemic. Soothe. I know you little wine drinkers in here. <laughs> I smell you. I know. A little wine with your steak. Pretty woman, wine with your strawberries. Okay. Yeah. Somebody said, wine with the strawberry. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just drinking. Because you at a restaurant and everybody else doing it. Write this down. You not everybody. You was born to stand out, not to fit in. And if they don't want you in the circle because you stand out, toodle loop, honey. Goodbye. Let them jokers go and you go on and grow. Write it down. You have to go to grow. I know, child. I gave y'all Romans chapter 12, bro. <laughs> Verses 1 through 2. I'm not going to read it, but you can. All right? And then I want you to also, <laughs> the lady said, I'm done and over with. Okay? I want you to also <laughs> write down 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, which talks about how God reveals his will. I gave you Romans chapter 12, verses 1, verse 2, and I was talking about transformation and conversion. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, which reveals the will. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Huh? Somebody? Oh. <laughs> you can't make loud noises in it because I got like dog ears. I can hear everything. All right. I want you to write down Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lay not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, you have to acknowledge him so he can direct your path. That is the will. You can't get all caught up in somebody else's plan. I know. Have you ever compared yourself? I have. Well, it looks like, God, you're doing this, and you're doing that, but what about me? And God was like, you're not focused. Set your gaze on the things that are above, not the things that are beneath you, around you, next to you, because what I have for them is for them. What I have for you is for you. Your journey is not their journey. Your process is not their process, but I'm still the same God who gives out the assignment and gives the gifts that I have placed on the inside of you just as well as them. But let me speak to the intercessor who says, what about me? The one who prays for everybody. And it seems like you see the will for them. But when it comes to you, you're still waiting. Let me tell you something right now. 
and you can write it down. Not many days henceforth it shall come to pass. But you have to believe that it is what God willed for you. You can't keep being up and down in your emotions. God, I believe you today. Tomorrow, I don't believe. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. You have to believe not many days henceforth. I know you prayed for them and they got in in three days. And you've been waiting three years. Five years, 10 years, it's the same for me. But God told me not many days henceforth. Elevate your sight. Get to Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and you stand upon your watchtower. Stop waiting for somebody to stand and watch. You stand and you watch. You see everything that the devil is doing, but can you see what God is doing? Where is the balance in your sight? When was the last time you revisit the vision? Do you even have one? Have you wrote it down? Have you prayed over it? Have you fasted over it? You good at praying for everybody else, but you have a hard time believing for yourself. But not many days henceforth. If you believe, stay in the will. God's will. Stop asking him, what is your will? What is your will? What is your will? His word is the will. No word, no power. Little word, little bitty power. A lot of word, mega power. You want to be sustained? Be sustained by the word. Not Twinkies. Not Netflix. Not your boo. And not your best friend. Not even my husband can sustain me. Not the way God can. It's the word. Stay on the path of life and righteousness. Dare to stand out in the midst of the wheel. And if they ask you, girl, what's going on with you? It's just part of the wheel. I feel like you distant, you this, you that. You're right. I am. It's not you. It is me. And it's okay. You don't want to connect with me anymore because you feel like I'm on a journey with Jesus? Then it's me. It's not you. See how you flip that baby? Instead of saying, girl, that's just you. That's your... No, stop pleading with these people about your relationship with the Father. Dumbing down who you are. Girl, it don't take all that. Yes, it is. Because if it did not be suicidal, depressed, or dead. You wasn't there when I wanted to kill myself. And you definitely wasn't there trying to save me. Girl, you'll be all right. No, I'm not. I'm not all right. I'm in a dark hole and you're telling me I'm going to be all right. Be encouraged. Courage. Encourage yourself. Girl. The reason why you're giving me this watered-down stuff is because you're empty. You have nothing to pour out. Toodles. Collab with that. Don't be stealing. No, I'm teasing. I just got it up here myself. You can have it, sugar. Put it on your T-shirt, your back, some potato chips, whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> it is not mine a coin, all right? I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm so tickled. I don't know what to do with myself. All right, listen. Did you get anything out of it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Do you got points, yes. notes, scriptures, definitions? Yes. Are you ready for activations? Yes. Were you okay with this, bringing me all the way to New York? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? All right, go ahead and stand. And don't be nervous. 
wow, that was amazing. And my hope and desire is that that word begin to set a fire on the inside of you for prayer like never before. Prayer is a technology that God uses for us to communicate with the Father and for him to communicate back with us. If you feel that fire on the inside of you, do not let it go out because I'm telling you that in the place of prayer, God will begin to build you up, cultivate you and do something on the inside of you that no one else could do before at all. So if you're that person and you were listening to this and you're saying, I want that fire to burn on the inside of me. I want to know this Jesus that I've been hearing about this entire time. Now is your opportunity where you can come into communion with the Father and begin to receive the salvation through Jesus Christ. You do not have to live the same exact way that you lived five minutes ago because Jesus Christ came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Now is your moment. If you want to give your life to Christ, the information is on the screen or in the comments below. We want to walk with you in this moment. We want to walk with you so that you can know what God has for your life and how you can live this out every single day. Now, maybe you're saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. He's already my Lord and Savior, but I want a church home. Listen, I want a church home that takes a time out to do a three day prayer conference so that I can understand what the Father is saying to me and recognize that I have the ability to also talk back with the Father. Fresh Start Christian Center is that place for you where you can experience your fresh start right now. We are that church. We are not a perfect church, but we are consistently being perfected by the one who is perfect. Fresh Start is that home for you. The, again, the information is on the screen or in the comments below. Email us so that we can walk with you. Now, I pray this worship experience did something completely new in your life and that wells of living water is springing up in you right now so that you do not have to go back to the old, but experience every new thing that God has for you right now. I pray that your week is blessed. I pray that you hold on to the things that God did in this worship experience but don't just hold on begin to give out everything that you learn pray like you never prayed before intercede like you've never interceded before and begin to go before the throne of God on behalf of someone else this week we love you and we cannot wait to see you next week for worship bye